thought maybe, you know, those Mexican teams coming in here, something to prove. Maybe, maybe, maybe we're going to get caught up. Nope. Two nothing, and right now we are joined by our dude, dude from Battered Herons podcast, Daniel Solana. Daniel Solana at the game from very beginning to very end. Give us your assessment, your breakdown of that two one victory for Inter Miami last night over Puebla. I mean, it, I think it was a fantastic win, uh, considering you know the team continues to play without Messi. This is now twenty one out of twenty four points without having Messi on their team. Let me tell you, Dan and Vlad, it was the first game in the history of Inter Miami that I felt from start to end where there was no issues or no issue winning the game. So I felt comfortable with Inter Miami winning the game from the first whistle to the end. The defense looked solid. We had a new, uh, the new player, David Martinez starting, which was fantastic. You had Drake calendar sitting on the bench, which was, which was another surprise. Um, CJ Dos Santos stepped in the backup played fantastic, had two excellent saves. Got a clean sheet. So overall, I think it was an unbelievable way to start Leagues Cup. Wait a minute. So Mr. Calendar sits down. I didn't see the game, obviously. So the starting goalie sits down and the backup plays well. Is that something we're going to continue to see? Uh, maybe a little bit more of the backup? What's going on there? It's possible. So I know after the game, Tata, uh, when they interviewed Tata in the um, – in the press conference, he mentioned that it was his decision to sit Drake. So it's not like it, there was an injury to Drake, much like how there was to Toto Aviles. Toto Aviles on Thursday had a um, uh, he got hit on the head during practice, and he was in the concussion protocol. So on Friday and on Saturday they went through the tests, and he wasn't available to play. That's why you had Sergio Busquets starting in the back with the new uh, the new incoming player, David Martinez. Um, so look. We've seen this in European Cups before where if teams are playing multiple tournaments, coaches are going to start, you know, bringing in new players and trying new players. So could it be possible that Leagues Cup is CJ Dos Santos's, you know, time to, to show? Possible. And I, I wouldn't be uh, against that because, again, in my opinion, I think Drake Callender is one of the best goalies under the pipes in the entire MLS. But he has a big issue with his feet and playing with his feet coming out of the back. That's something that CJ Dos Santos excels at. And we saw that yesterday when the ball is at his feet, he's comfortable and he can play it out. He played one great ball to Bobby Taylor up on the left, on the left wing that we've never seen Drake play a ball like that ever. So again, is it, I, I think it would be great if he gets this opportunity. Speaking of guys stepping up, of course, Lionel Messi has not been playing lately. Matias Rojas gets a big goal early in the game. How good has he been? And is he the future of inter Miami? I don't know if he's the future, but I'll tell you this. You know, he he's if I if I'm not mistaken, I believe he's on loan right now with the team. Um and, and with an option to buy. He was playing before in Corinthians in Brazil. He's been really, really good while he's been here. Uh the first couple games he came, he had a couple bangers. Then he kind of went stale for a, about a month. After the Copa America that he was there and, and he got some playing time. He's been on a tear since, since he's been back. Two straight games with a goal. That banger that he hit yesterday was unbelievable. He seems to be really, really connecting very well with Jordi Alba and Robert Taylor on that left side. And I'm really, really excited about what they're, what they're doing. In terms of, is he the future? I'm not sure. I'm not sure if he's the future, but he's definitely the present. And without Messi, he's definitely, definitely putting in some work in there for the team. You need to explain to me, um, Daniel. We have, we're here with Daniel Solana. Alejandro Solana's older, better brother, you know, for, uh, producer for the Hawk and Crowd show on 560 WQAM. You got to explain to me how they are playing this well without Messi. This is crazy. Like, this would be like the Heat playing, winning 9 out of 10 without Jimmy. Or, you know what I'm saying? Or the Panthers winning, going on a, a winning streak where they've won like 12 out of 13 without Kachuk or something like that. This is amazing the way they played without Messi doing to injury or international play. And, I mean, what what does this say about this team right now? I mean, yeah, I, I think it says a lot about what uh, Jorge Mas, Chris Henderson, and, and the front office has really done to put together a very, very competitive team. I, I mean, for, for the casual fans that are not really, um, you know, uh, well off in, in terms of knowing the rules in, in the MLS, there's a lot of, lot of weird – uh, complicated roster rules. And it's not easy to, to put together a very competitive roster with a lot of international players like Inter Miami has done. And they've been able to find a way to get the perfect veterans, which we talked about last week in Sergio Busquets, Jordi Alba, and Luis Suarez, and combine them with young guys, you know, Matias 
Rojas is not that not that young, but he's still a young, very, very uh, good player who can come in. And it's not that big of a fall off from some of the other great players. Whereas you see in other teams in the MLS, you know, you're, you know, for I'll, I'll give you an example. You take out Lucho Acosta from Cincinnati uh, FC. He's one of their, he's their best player. And they have they hadn't won a game in like four games. So they've lost more games without their best player than Inter Miami has lost without their best player. So it really goes to show you that this team is really built for for the long run and to compete in all tournaments. Yeah, and remember Facundo Farias, he's not playing at all this season, correct? He had an ACL. That's correct. He tore his ACL against El Salvador in the uh, preseason tournament, but he's been already seen back on the field practicing, um, you know, doing some individual drills. He hasn't been practicing with the team yet, but uh, I heard he's out all season. He'll be back next season. Uh, but, uh, you know, we've had some big news with uh, with Brighton. And finally, we talked about it last week with Diego Gomez. So that is a done deal. From what I've heard, he will be going to Brighton. We're still mm. waiting to see if he's going to go now or if he'll stay an extra six months until the end of the year and go in December, uh, which I think would be huge if he was able to stay for an extra six months because he gives you another option in the midfield. So we'll, well, we'll they, see what happens with Gomez. Daniel Solana, I'm guessing one of your all-time favorite players, if not your all-time favorite player, Luis Suarez, correct? Absolutely, my all-time favorite. I was a little worried about his knee, although he did have a great year in Brazil before he came over to Inter-Miami. I did know, not think he would be as good as he has been this year. How much gas do you think he has in the tank, though? I mean, we don't we know Messi. It, it's going to be a while. How much gas do you think he has in the tank? Not just for this season, but maybe possibly he seems to like it here, maybe for the future. Uh, it's something that I've talked about a lot uh, on the podcast with some friends. You know, Suarez is having a really good time. His 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 idea of, I guess, retirement, because that's basically where he's in. He's on the downswing of his career. This is what he wanted. He was he wanted to be able to enjoy it with his friends, enjoy it with his family, be able to you know get get on the pitch, come off uh, you know and play with his kids after the game. That's what they're doing. So can he stay an extra year? Look, he's done fantastic this year. He's put away quite a few goals. He's done a great job distributing the ball as as the Inter Miami's uh, number nine. And yesterday, I, you know, for for I don't know if you guys are stats guys, but he scored his five hundred and seventy third goal, which matches him with Zlatan Ibrahimovic. So, mm. and and funny enough, guys, it was the first time I've ever seen Suarez score a goal live in my entire really. Life. I've Whoa. waited. Wait a minute, how many Uruguay games have you gone to, and how many Inter Miami games have you gone to that you haven't? This is your first Suarez go live and in living color. I need to yeah. know how many games. So Give me an Ur estimate. Uruguay games, I've been to at least eight or nine Uruguay games, uh, whereas I've only seen him play with Uruguay just this last Copa America because all the other games I'd been to, he was either suspended or <laughs> injured or something. So I, I hadn't been able to see him. Um, Inter Miami, I've, I've seen him probably like four or five times since he's gotten here, but yeah, I haven't been able to you know see a goal. Thank goodness, you know, I was telling my wife and my kid last night, I was like, hey, man, if Suarez scores, scores it'll be the first time ever. I've waited 38 years for this. So I finally got Jeez. to see the goal. Finally got to see the goal. Um, it sucks that it wasn't behind, you know, the goal that I was sitting behind of, but I, I was glad. It was a beautiful goal. What a great ball by Gressel to uh, to Jordi Alba. Great touch by Jordi Alba to Suarez, and it was it was a beautiful goal. So we can have one more year of Messi and friends. Is that what you're trying to say? We can have a one more year of Messi and friends rolling across the United States, uh, MLS, international tournaments. Because I, I was thinking that this was Messi's going to be Messi's last year. But if these guys are enjoying having fun and he's seeing how good they are without him, where he may not have to play so many minutes, but still reap the benefits of the, the draw that he is and what he's done for the MLS game, can we have one more year of Messi and friends? Absolutely. I, I, I don't think it's 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 a can we it's it's we're definitely going to have it. So he's definitely signed through next year. Um, and it could be possible that we even get him for another half of year. So before the, the Copa America, uh, Lionel Scaloni, the coach of the Argentine national team, said that they have a plan in place for Messi to get to the 2026 World Cup if he's on board. Uh, the fact that the 2026 World Cup is taking place in the United States, Canada and Mexico, Inter Miami, uh, you know, plays in in my you know in one of the one of the cities that's going to host games. I think it's you know a no brainer that Messi will most likely definitely stay through 2025. Um, and I'm going to throw it out there and say he stays at least to the first half of 2026 because the stadium is now rumored to open December 2025. So what better way to kick off Inter Miami in their new stadium right next to the Miami International Airport than with Lionel Messi being there in the inaugural game?
But getting back now to League's Cup that we're in right now, of course, we do know that Messi most likely, at least not for the beginning, is going to play. Does this team have enough? I mean, I was a little skeptical. The way they played against Pueblo last night has got me believing. Is there a chance that they could repeat and make it back to at least the final of League's Cup this year? Is there a chance? Yes. It's not going to be as easy as it was last year, just because of the scheduling and the way it is. So Inter-Miami played Puebla last night, who is one of the, the you know weaker teams in Liga MX. They get Tigres next Saturday, who's one of the better teams. They have Guignac and, and a lot of other very, very good players that play on that team. They've won CONCACAF Champions Cup before. So, you know, these are, uh, they're going to be tough games. Now, if they beat Tigres and they make it to the next round, then they, they'll match up against uh, the second place team from the group of Toronto FC, New York Red Bulls, and I, I forget the, the third team that's in there. Now, Toronto won last night. So that's, you know, that, that's a good thing. It could mean that Toronto ends up second place. Inter-Miami gets a nice, favorable matchup. But the next matchup after that is going to be either against Cincinnati FC or, you know, another Liga MX team. So it's going to be a tough, tough route to, to, to get to the finals this year, where last year it might have been a little bit easier and you had the messy magic helping you out. Yeah, you might have to face a team like America out of Mexico City, which is always a daunting task. But right now, I'm not ruling this team out. I did not see them doing this well without Messi, to be honest with you. Absolutely not. You might not have, but... uh, Oh, you did? Battered Herons podcast has tape on you believing? I will. Uh, they, they do. They do have tape. It's out there uh, before Messi left. I said, I said, you know, everybody was saying eight or nine points out of the 18 of the games that Messi wasn't going to participate was was probably doable. I said if it was less than 12, I would be disappointed. Obviously, 18 would have been fantastic. They got 15. So clearly I was on some sort of right pattern, right track here. Um, and, and now they're 21 out of 24 without Messi. So uh, all those you know rumors about Messi, you know Inter Miami not being able to win without Messi and all that, it's clearly false because mm-hmm. you win twenty one out of twenty four. You're playing, you know, uh, the the former or the, the the defending champion, and you you route them at home, and then you win all those other games. I mean, you, you can't that can't be a, a, an excuse anymore. Yeah, it really does seem like this Inter Miami team is built just more than just Messi. They didn't just put Messi in there and say everyone play around him. They actually really do have it going on, and it's always been fun. You were at the stadium last night. How was the crowd? Now, we we're talking about the Messi effect. We know that where every Messi shows up, it's must see soccer. Was the crowd, and I know we've got the great supporters groups like the Southern Siege, and we got Vice City 1896. The supporters groups are going to be there, but how was the overall crowd at Chase Stadium last night? Well, I, I don't know if you guys saw, I posted an uh, announced crowd was 16,400 and something. So that would mean it was about a 70, 75% sellout. I can tell you, prior to the game starting, the West Stand was completely empty. The only thing that was, you know, that, that was full was the, where the players' families sit. Um, the North and South Stands, which is the North Stand is where all the, the La Familia sits, that was slammed, completely slammed. The South Stand, where I was sitting, completely slammed. So the only one side that was kind of empty was that West Side. But I mean, given the, the 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 price of the tickets on that side, it's kind of understandable. I, I know that some uh, season ticket members paid you know north of one hundred and thirty dollars for their tickets. Unfortunately, some couldn't go yesterday, and they couldn't even sell them for twenty bucks. Mm. So, I mean, it, and that's crazy. I mean, you've got uh, Busquets, Jordi Alba, Suarez, and, and and the tickets were fourteen, fifteen dollars yesterday. I mean, it was it was unbelievable how low the tickets were. But it was great to see a nice turnout, especially with all this boycott Leeds Cup thing that's going on. And and you've seen, you know, uh, on social media, so some supporters group, two supporters groups from Minnesota said that they weren't going to go to the games. A supporters group from um, Austin said that they weren't going to go to the game. But Friday night, that Austin Pumas game was, was, wow. It was just crazy. What a crazy game. The fans were going nuts. So I don't know if this boycott Leeds Cup thing, you know, this Leeds Cup versus U.S. Open Cup, I don't know if it's a real thing because – Everything that I see, every stadium is rocking for these games. And the the, the Liga MX fans, they don't care about the U.S. Open Cup. They're going to show up, and they're going to show out. The one thing that I love is that MLS has been taking them to town every single chance they get. I mean, I, if, if I'm right, if, if I'm not mistaken, I think it's 5-1 MLS to Liga MX and the head-to-head. Um, so that's a really good start to the League's Cup for MLS, especially with everything going on um, you know, between Mexico and U.S. and that battle that they have going on. It's what a lot of people have overlooked that MLS, as much as you want to knock it, a lot of people, it's an easy punching bag. They have held their own against Liga MX over the past two, at least so far in these uh, League's Cups. 
MLS is really, and for people that aren't paying attention and watching, really has become a much stronger league over the past, I would even say, five years. No doubt. And I think they have a chance to become a top, you know, a top five league within the next 10 years. Uh, you can see that as, as the players start coming. Look, LAFC signed Hugo Lloris. They signed uh, Oliver Giroud, who was having a great year over in, in Italy. They're now rumored to be bringing uh, Antoine Griezmann. Could you imagine if that were to happen? If they were, I mean, look what's going on. You, you have one team basically creating uh, a copy of the French national team over on the West Coast. You've got one team who's got like the <laughs> South American all stars on the East Coast. I mean, isn't that what MLS wants? I mean, wouldn't the perfect final if Griezmann goes there be LAFC well, into Miami? I mean, well, clearly, I mean, they, 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 any final. In any sport, if you in North America, if you had Los Santos versus Miami, everybody would want to go. So this, I'm glad that you bring you bring this up. With the success that obviously um, Zoltan had in LA, guys have had in um, going to Los Angeles, and the success that, uh, like you said, some of the great South American players coming down here. Do you see more players now, more international players now coming down, wanting to come to MLS because of what they've seen? Um, I mean, other stars have come before, but it wasn't really that good or they weren't that successful. But in recent years, you see the success that some players have, you know, going the back nine of their career. So do you see any more? And if so, what names do you think may come to the uh, MLS or in, especially into Miami? Yeah, I mean, I think I think in terms of of a league, it's going to be based on on how teams operate. So I think a lot of players are going to want to come to Inter Miami because they see, you know, them bringing guys like Diego Gomez, like Federico Redondo. And look, Diego Gomez was, has been here for a year and a half and they just sold him for 18 million or 15 million. And it could be up to 18 million. And if I'm not mistaken, they bought him for a little bit less than 10 million. So, I mean, they're going to make money and, and players are seeing that Inter Miami can be the jumping spot to get you, you know, from South America. If you're not already seen, you know, directly into Europe, you can come to an inner Miami and then jump to Europe because it's 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 obviously been seen. It's it's happening and it's gonna continue to happen. So I think it's gonna be a team by team basis um, because other teams are not like that. Uh, other teams are uh, like to build from within, um, and they don't you know necessarily buy the young players from South America. So it's gonna be again a team by team basis based on how the owners feel that they want to run their team. Um, you know, some owners want to spend money, some don't. That's another big, big topic. And again, we can talk about this for the next, you know, year, all the crazy things that are going on in the MLS. And I'm sure we'll have more chances to talk. So, um, but to answer your question, Vlad, look, I think 100% more players, more young players are going to come from both Europe and South America because we're seeing more and more happen. But in terms of what I guess star players, I think that's where you're kind of going to, or what yeah, big because, name players. Well, um, I mean, the the reason why I actually that Daniel is because I mean, if you notice, they go to the big cities. So and if and if they're doing if they are successful, the city starts supporting. You see what's happened in L.A., uh, New York. When they had Henri, they started to support a little bit, and obviously we've seen what Messi Messi Mania has done down here. So as the MLS, but there's so many good teams in the MLS, like you know, but they're not major markets, but they have great fan base and anything like that. So what I'm asking is, are there maybe certain players maybe going to, are they just looking at the major cities or maybe they might go not, to a Cincinnati or so? Or, yeah, uh, so I, I don't think necessarily. Portland. Yeah, so Mar Marco Royce, who is a big name in Germany and, and he played for, for uh, uh, Borussia Dortmund many years, he was rumored to be going to St. Louis City um, mm. at first. It was there was strong ties. And that's because, um, you know, St. Louis City, they have a, a general manager who's European, um, who's, I believe, German. And, you know, he has a, a strong tie there. And so there's a lot of and, and Berkey. Berkey is also, if I'm not mistaken, I believe he's German as well. So there's a long a lot of ties there. Now, Vlad, you said it, man. He went he's going to, to, to the galaxy. They want to go to big cities because that's where the action is. They want to be able to go eat and stuff. So I think it's I think it's on again on the owners on the teams and on the fan base's responsi responsibility to make those players feel at home and want them to go there, show them. And that, that's been the biggest, I think, um, argument of folks saying, oh, well, it's not fair if Miami can, you know, if they open up the, the cap because Miami players are going to want to go there and players are going to want to go to L.A. and New York and maybe Houston or Dallas because those are the bigger cities. Who's going to want to go to Columbus, Cincinnati, um, you know, um, somewhere in Minnesota? 
not not a lot of players, but that's on the teams and, and on the and on the city's responsibility to show the player like, hey, we welcome you. We want you here. And might they have to pay a little bit extra because they don't live in a in a great, you know, in Miami or whatever for that player? Yeah, you might have to. But those are the things that you got to do. I mean, that's what they do in PSG, right? They they they, they just give billions of dollars to whoever because nobody wants to go live in Paris. Let's be real. Okay, I'm going to ignore that comment, but I will say. You might be right. You might be, he's right. You want to visit. You might, you might not want to live. 